this is Look What Happens Dance. I'm Kendra and it is time for chapter 39 of Yarn Tales. Now Yarn Tales is my ongoing series here at Hook by Happenstance where I read books, I tell you a bit about them, and then I apply Silly Kendra rules to my star rating for the book and I add a segment to my reading shawl. Now my reading shawl began as one shawl and then it became two and now it is three shawls for the year because I'm 39 books in and we're still talking about things that I read in April. So the last few books we talked about have been books that I read for Fantasy-a-thon, which was a read-a-thon that I did in April. The book we're going to talk about today, however, was not part of that. The book we're going to talk about today is called Another Day is Emily by Eileen Spinelli. It's a book that I read with my kids, and it is a book in verse. Now, we picked this up just kind of, I found it on the shelf at the library, which is one of my favorite ways to find books. This was a physical book, which we checked out from our physical library. And I will just walk the shelves and pick out things that look interesting, read synopses. There's usually books where I look at them multiple times and then we finally get them. Usually when we go to our physical library, I don't go in with any sort of plan. There's occasionally a book or two that I'm looking for specifically, but I'm usually just going to to browse and find you know that's when I pick books based purely on their cover title or what have you so I forget what made me pick this book up but I remembered once I read the synopses that I'd looked at it before and hadn't gotten it so this book is about a girl who is feeling a little less than special the way the book begins is that her little brother um, is with one of their neighbors who ends up needing 911 called and so he is deemed a hero even though she shows up shortly after and assists with the whole process of getting this woman care. So it is talking about all these different things that go on throughout her summer that are making her feel more and more average or below average. And then there comes to this point where their library program um, assigns everybody a character basically they're gonna dress up as to kind of embody for this assignment well she chooses Emily Dickinson and in reading about Emily Dickinson she finds out that Emily Dickinson was for many many could look at it as she was basically a hermit she didn't really interact with a lot of people she spent her time at home at the time people didn't realize that what she was doing was working a lot on her poetry because most of her poetry was not published till after her death after she died they found gobs and gobs of poetry in her house i don't know how much you know about emily dickinson but that is what happened so the girl takes on the role of emily dickinson and starts living it out in her life she even she only wears a white dress like emily wore and she makes basically a bucket list kind of of like items that are things that emily did so she can bake she can read she can write like this whole thing and the whole story is told in verse which is perfect because you know if you were to be living your life as Emily Dickinson your whole life would be lived out in verse I really liked the format of this book because while it was in verse and it read in verse and it sounded nice and I read it aloud so it was actually very easy for me to follow the formatting was very nice and just it was very, very well written, many, many poems in a row. And it kept the plot moving. I always worry with a book that's written this way that perhaps they're going to seem like very individual poems, like one thought, two thought, three thoughts, like they're not all just gonna flow. But in this case, it just, the story kept moving. It would kind of, you know, ramp up and then it would come down and go up and come down just like you would expect a story to in prose. However, it was not written in your standard prose. Instead, you got this lovely musical language and we all had a really good time listening to it. I, like I said, read it aloud to my kids and they have just been asking, they want to read more books that are in verse. Um, we, lis we listened to the audiobook of Brown Girl Dreaming and then we read this book and I've listened to a couple of books in, um, in verse but I'm definitely on the lookout for some more because they really enjoy it. I think it's a nice and um, like kind of a change up way to expose my kids to poetry. I like to expose them to as much poetry as possible and not in like a, this is a mandatory thing to do kind of way, but just like it's around. We, I read a lot of it um, aloud. We kind of come across it. They have access to poetry books to read on their own. It's just like a thing because I really enjoy poetry. And so I feel like that's the best way. Like you're going to find a love of poetry. The only way you're gonna do that is by just 
consuming a lot of it and then you'll find the style of poetry that speaks to you hopefully i think there's a style of poetry that speaks to everybody even the people who don't think they like poetry there is a kind of poetry out there that i think will speak to them and this might be a new and interesting way for you to experience some poetry is in a book form and not just a book of individual poems but like you know, a full novel. And it was 200 some pages. So it was not a short book of poems. It was a full, complete, well fleshed out story. And in addition to the format being really cool, the general plot was enjoyable as well. Um, I enjoyed all of the characters. There was nothing, like people, everybody was nice in the book, but not in like a fakey way. But there wasn't just, I don't know, sometimes I feel like they make kind of a contrived meanness between children characters just to like form conflict without having to have there be anything that's deemed like non-suitable and the sentence that means that people don't treat each other very nicely but everybody in this book is very kind to each other and I enjoyed that so now let's move on to the reading shawl so that you can see what I did I have been working this shawl using four different yarns. My original intent had been for each of those to have a different meaning. However, I've made a few changes, so now I have two different yarns that are counting for physical books because I have read so many physical books this year. So I have a color for physical books that I read by myself. I have a color for audiobooks that I read by myself, and then I have a color for books that I consume with my kids. Now this shawl overall is inspired by the color green and the books with my kids are very much inspired by the color green. This yarn, oops, I'll put my hook down. This yarn, this yarn is called Green Man. It is from Cattails Yarn. I ordered all of the yarn for this shawl, specifically for this shawl and I kind of ordered them all to match the waist colorway, which is um, the variegated here, which is also a Cattails Yarn. But this Green Man color is part of her Wheel of Time uh, collection. That's the word I'm looking for. And it has so many beautiful, vibrant shades of green. And I was so excited when I added the first batch of this in because it just totally changed the whole color palette of the shawl. As soon as I added the stripe, everything just popped different. And I'm so excited to finish this because I want to wear it as soon as I added this color in. It's so... I don't even know how to explain it, but it just, it's exciting. It's exciting to work with and the color just feels like vibrant and alive and that's kind of fun. So as you can see, I worked my patterned row because for each yarn, I also have a kind of patterning so that they're not all the same. I do one patterned row and then I do a row of textured single crochet for each star that I gave the book. I gave Another Day's Emily four stars because the way that the book is written was really enjoyable. The plot was nice. I mean, it wasn't like over the top, but I felt like it was kind of an interesting concept and done in a way that I had not seen before and I found that enjoyable. Was it a perfect book? No, but it was really, really good. And I would recommend that if you are at all interested in the idea of reading a book in prose, this might be a nice place to start because it was easy to understand what was happening. And I know that for some people, reading things in verse can make them get kind of lost because they're a little confused by the structure, but this was very, very easy to follow. Oh, as you can see, I added my four rows of textured single crochet for the four stars that I gave the book. And I just, the striping is so beautiful. I'm just oh, so excited to get this shawl done. It's so smooshy because I did use DK weight yarn. This is on Kat's DK base. So it uh, it's obviously a little thicker than the last shawl, which was fingering weight. So I did the first shawl that I did for Yarn Tails was DK. Then I did a fingering weight one and this one is DK as well. If you would like to catch up on any of the chapters so far of Yarn Tails, there is a playlist here on the channel so you can do so. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss out on any future chapters, make sure you subscribe because I don't post on a regulated schedule. So the best way to make sure you don't miss out on any of my videos is to subscribe and then you can just check your sub feed and I will float to the top whenever I upload. Hope you all are having a great whenever you see this, and I will see you next time. Bye!